ACE is a nonprofit association of professionals who provide an array of services based on their expertise to businesses, nonprofits, and other organizations. Uh, and you can find out more information about that at uh, www.consultexpertise.com. If you are interested in how ACE can elevate your business, uh, you can discover all the benefits of membership at aceelevates.com. So those, those benefits include programs like this, webinars, networking opportunities, uh, the ability to present your expertise, either at any of those type of things or uh, through writing. Uh, we have our members have public profiles on the webpage. We have a referral resource center. Uh, we have social media groups on both fa Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, and so there's an opportunity to showcase any of the books, articles, et cetera, that you may have. We also have a monthly column, uh, Ask Ace in Maine Biz, um, and Carrie Yardley is putting together an editorial calendar for that. We encourage all members to take advantage of this. It's a great way to um, get yourself out there a little bit and also contribute to the community at large. Uh, we also have templates, proposals, contracts, et cetera. And we also have a, um, some benefits relative to the Portland Regional Chamber, which we're gonna hear about in detail today. Ah, so we'd like to do introductions. And what, what has been requested for this particular session that for these introductions that you state your name, your business or organization name, uh, what you do, how long you've been around doing that, uh, if you have employees, what the employee count is, and where you are located. And I will just start going down the list and uh, I'll do myself first and I'll just go down who I can see and call on you. Uh, so I'm Terry Johnson. Uh, I work under the banner of practical decisions, uh, predominantly around innovation exercises for new products and for uh, business models. Been operating since 2015. Um, I am a solo entrepreneur, although practical decisions is a marketing umbrella for another two individuals. Uh, and I'm located in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, Judy. Good morning. Um, my name is Judy Jones. Uh, my business is Info Harbor. I'm a website developer, online marketer, been in business for 22 years. Uh, I am in business as me and me only, and I'm located in Gorham. Uh, my name is Bob Labrie. I own a training and seminar business. Actually, now it's training and consulting. I changed it about a year and a half ago, and I changed the business model. Uh, primary, I do um, sales consulting and sales training. Been in uh, business since 2000. I'm a solopreneur. I'm located in Gorham, Maine. I'm in the process now of moving everything I've done for the last 35 years online. So it's, a, it's, it's daunting and arduous. Uh, good morning. John Shorb, the Delphi Group. Uh, I and Dana Moritz Jones uh, do business and management consulting. We, the two of us have been working together for 20 years. I've been doing this sort of work for 30 years. Um, while it's just the two of us, we do occasionally involve other colleagues depending on the nature of the work we're doing. We're located in Scarborough uh, and our work has taken us all over the country as well as internationally. Uh, hello, good morning, it's Sam Bishop and I'm a Pace Consulting Group. Um, Pace has been around since 1970. I've been a consultant uh, for 43 years, since 1977. And we do general management consulting to small and medium-sized businesses, doing everything from strategic planning to uh, financial assistance, whatever is needed. Uh, work with a number of companies on an ongoing basis as interim CEO, COO, or CFO. I'm floating in Portland, Maine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hi, I'm Richard Hobby. My company is Green Gage. I started the company in 1999, so that makes it 21 years. It's a communication company. I've over the years had many different clients, including MetLife, Pepsi, Better Homes and Gardens, National Semiconductor, and Texas Instruments. I am the sole proprietor of it. I have no employees, and it's based in Harpswell. Hey, good morning. My name is Tom Renahan. Um, I run a leadership and coaching business, uh, and I um, mostly focus on leadership on small professional firms uh, in Maine, as well as I have one national client, 
I've been around for about three years. I retired from the corporate world a couple of years ago. Uh, it is it is just me. I'm a sole proprietor, and I am located in Yarmouth, Maine. Good morning. Um, well, so John already partially introduced me. John and I are partners in the organization development consulting firm, the Delphi Group. Um, we've been in business together for about 20 years, but uh, I was a sole practitioner before that. And uh, before that, I used to work internally for a gas and electric utility. The only thing I'll add to what John said is that um, we find ourselves being fairly unique in that we work together most of the time as a male and female. We've done that um, through the years, doing a lot of leadership development work as, along with general organization development. And most recently, uh, we do a lot of executive coaching. And people seem to find it helpful that uh, we bring both of our perspectives. John as a recovering engineer, as we like to say, me as a recovering psychologist and uh, male and female. So that's us, the Delphi Group. We're based in Scarborough. Hello, uh, I just retired a couple of weeks ago from SGC Engineering. So I'm looking at setting up on my own. Uh, I do engineering, wind and solar de project development and business consulting. I've been 44 years as a professional engineer and working. So right now I gotta kind of look at what the water has in it. I live in Portland. Uh, good morning, I'm Francis Eberly. I work with Price Associates and I like to say that I help leaders see things they wouldn't normally see themselves. And what that really involves is coaching and leadership development, working with teams and leaders. I work with the Price Associates Group. I joined them about five years ago. They've been around since 1984. They have colleagues, or I have colleagues around the country, so I can utilize them as needed. Um, but most of my clients are here in Maine. And I am located in Pittsburgh, so next to Bath. Good morning, uh, Randy Hogan. I'm uh, with Hogan Philanthropy Consulting, which I started this past March uh, to help uh, individuals and families who want to channel their wealth for uh, good uh, causes in social, economic, and environmental progress. I've been uh, doing this work of advising individuals and families for a couple decades, but I've been attached to specific nonprofit organizations, and now I'm independent and uh, working solely for um, those families. I also support nonprofit organizations by helping them uh, develop major gift programs. Uh, I am a sole proprietorship and based here in Scarborough. Hello, good morning. I'm Priscilla Hanson Mahoney. Uh, my business is Blazing Trails Coaching. I work with owners and leaders of skill-based businesses, also known as the trades. Um, I've been in business since 2009, so 11 years. And uh, the employees are me, myself, and I. And I'm located in South Portland. Hi, um, I'm Allison Bishop. I am a financial coach, which I started um, this business five years ago after 17 years as a CPA. Well, I'm still a CPA. Um, it's just me, um, and my office is in downtown Portland by the Art Museum. Good morning. Um, I'm excited to be here. Terry and Priscilla have invited me to several of these breakfasts, so it's finally nice to get here. Um, my name is Megan Piper. I work for Piper Consulting. I am a sole proprietorship, and I focus on working with small business leadership teams. Uh, I teach them a system called the Entrepreneurial Operating System, where I help them to align and where they want to get the company, increase execution and accountability, and learn how to have healthy conversations, communication to drive the company forward. I am located in Brunswick, and I've been doing this for a couple of years. Arthur Fink, Arthur Fink Consulting. For decades as a consultant, I've been trying to generate questions that help deepen the conversation with my clients, businesses and nonprofits. And about a year ago, I began to name that and say, what I do is help clients find the questions that they really need to address. And in finding the right questions, we're finding the goals, the deep issues, not necessarily answering the questions, but finding them. Um, 
I'm Carrie Yardley. I run a small law firm, actually a, so a single practitioner law firm. Um, and I have been doing that since 2015. I've been a lawyer since 1983. We help um, small businesses um, and support them from basically cradle to grave. So that runs the gamut from formation to succession planning to, um, to estate planning that dovetails with your, um, succession, with your succession plan. Um, we're based in Yarmouth, but we have satellite offices in um, uh, Biddeford and Portland. Uh, I am the vice president of ACE this year, but uh, I think more importantly for this program, I'm the outreach chair and I'm your contact at ACE to help you navigate um, the benefits uh, that the chamber folks are going to describe today. This is Bill Overlock. Uh, I have a small um, accounting firm located on Long Island, and I basically do taxes and help small businesses. Uh, so now I'd like to turn it over to John. Uh, John's going to do the introductions for the chamber. Well, th thank you, Terry, <clears throat> and thank everyone for the, the informative introductions. Um, just to kind of set the stage here a bit, I, I've been in conversation with Quincy Hensel. Um, for those of you who don't know her, she's the president and CEO of the uh, Greater Portland Chamber. I've been in conversation with Quincy for over two years trying to find a mutually good date for this conversation to happen. And something always seems to come up. I told, ten, I told uh, Quincy uh, last week, and I think I mentioned this to Tommy, I probably have a better chance of getting on Dancing with the Stars than getting on Quincy's dance card. But <laughs> we're privileged today to, to have the heart of the the, the chamber staff with us. And Quincy again has found herself engaged in multiple activities this morning. So she is likely to duck in. We don't know exactly when for a bit, but uh, she's being pulled in a number of directions. We have, uh, we have asked the, the chamber group to focus on three primary topics. One, uh, has to do with the benefits that are offered by our organization's membership in the chamber, as well as individual benefits that, that come with that. Um, and we'll hear a lot about that. I think it's probably one of the most underutilized benefits that ACE, ACE membership has. We've also asked them to uh, talk a, a bit about uh, current initiatives and perspectives on the Portland business community, and also then how ACE can further serve chamber members and how we may be more connected. As Carrie Yardley has already mentioned, before we close, she will uh, quickly go over some things that represent opportunities that she and Tommy have been uh, discussing. Now, we would like this to be a conversation, as difficult as that is with, with a Zoom format. So um, we, will, we will ask that pe people are, are able to ask questions along the way. Um, pretty much at any time. I think there are a number of ways you can make a comment or, or ask a question. Raise your hand. Uh, Terry and I will try to monitor this and, uh, and help you get your question in. Or um, the chat room is always available. And I guess as a last resort, just unmute and say that you have a question. So if that's okay with the chamber group, um, we'd like to keep this as sort of informal and conversational as, as possible. So the chamber of members who are currently with us, I don't see Quincy here yet, um, include Tommy Johnson. Tommy, raise your hand. Everybody see Tommy? Okay. And Tommy is the, the director of membership and events. We have Joe Merrill. Joe, where are you? Is the director of ad advocacy. Dan Santos, oh. Membership Development Manager, and Corinne Mockler, who's the Marketing Manager. Did I miss anyone? Oh, Allie. Allie, you, you might introduce yourself. Or maybe Good you did. Good morning. Um, Thank you. I am the Vice President of Propel Portland, which is the Chamber's Young Professional Society. 
Oh, great. We were hoping that, that someone from uh, Propel would be with us. So it's, one, it's great to have you. Did I miss anyone else? Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to uh, turn this over to Tommy. Thank you, John. Hopefully everybody can see and hear me. We are, uh, we're delighted to be able to present to uh, the folks at ACE. And uh, again, very appreciative of the relationship that we've had with ACE for nearly 20 years now. Um, ACE has been a member of the chamber uh, since, about nine, uh, since about 2001. And um, I think this is a long time coming, the, um, the ability to partner with all you folks and the skill sets that you all bring. So um, we're excited to present to you uh, some of the benefits that the chamber offers and then specifically uh, some benefits that we've got designed uh, for, for ACE. So if you could flip to the next slide, Andrea. So uh, having spoken with John and Terry and Carrie over the last couple of months, um, we wanted to see how we could really enrich um, what ACE members get out of the ACE membership with the Portland Regional Chamber. And it's a bit of an interesting relationship in that the Chamber is a membership organization and ACE is a membership organization. Um, so how does that translate? What, what does that give you all as members of ACE uh, in that your organization is a member of the Chamber? So um, there's a couple things that we talked about. And if I've missed anything here, Carrie, uh, we can certainly chime in. This is a, this is a sort of a evolving conversation. And again, if there's things that you guys need uh, and want to ask of us, we can certainly have a conversation. So, uh, but this is what we've kind of um, boiled things down into um, just to begin the conversation. So uh, the Chamber has plenty of events, which you'll hear about throughout the year. Um, but we do offer um, Chamber events for ACE members at either the discounted or the free rate, which is what all of our members would enjoy. Um, so we do plenty of events throughout the year. We've gone virtual this year with the pandemic hitting us, but typically we do over 100 events per year. Uh, this past year in 2020, we started the year off strong, and I think we had about a half dozen or so events. And then, of course, with uh, the COVID pandemic in March, we had to shift to a virtual format. The good news with that is um, our virtual format is drawing the same or higher numbers of attendees, uh, because I think people find it a little bit easier to be able to access the events uh, from the comfort of their living room, uh, behind their computer, and more people throughout the state can access them, whereas before they'd have to travel into Portland. Um, these next two bullets, I think, are going to be of real interest, and I want to spend a little bit more time talking about them. The, uh, the, the, the first one is um, the ability for ACE members to sub submit blog content uh, to the chamber. And this is something that we've really been just discussing for the last couple months. Um, I got a chance to speak with Carrie to find out that you all, ACE members, have um, rich amounts of content that you can provide to the public, and sometimes maybe just need a for forum to do that. Uh, the Chamber puts out a lot of communication, which you'll hear about later when we talk about marketing and communication. Um, but one way that you can get your information out to more people is through our monthly Onward email newsletter. And that goes out to, I'm going to mess this up, I'll let Corinne correct me later, about 10,000 people. Um, so that's a, a great way for ACE uh, consultants in their area of specialty, specialty to be able to deliver content that's applicable to our members um, through one of the Chamber um, platforms. The next is the ability to facilitate a presentation at one of the Chamber's seminar series. And um, I'm excited to see that Allison Bishop is on this call today. Um, I happen to know Allison just through our, our kids, their friends here in town in Falmouth. Uh, but the, the ability to present content, again, that's specific to your industry, but would have a benefit for more eyeballs and more ears uh, throughout the Chamber audience is, is an important one. Um, the reason I brought up Allison is Allison will be presenting uh, at our next Growth Basics for Business, which is one of our signature uh, seminar series that the Chamber does monthly. Uh, typically, this would be a live event that we would do. Um, it's going to be next week on Tuesday. Uh, the, I'm thinking, is that the 7th? I'm, I'm losing track of the date here. but It's the 20th. I, thank you, Allison. <laughs> uh, the, the, the 20th uh, next week at 8 a.m. If you'd like to register for that event, uh, you can go to the Chamber website. We'll, we'll give you some clues on how to do that later. Uh, but Allison's going to be talking about Essentially, you've started your own entrepreneurship, you've started your own business, now what? What are the things that I've forgotten to do? Um, she brings a bit of expertise in that in her, in her field of uh, financial coaching. Um, but this is just an example of the ability for all of you, if you've got content that you wanna deliver uh, to our membership, to be able to put that in a format, whether it be the Growth Basics seminar series, or we can do a one-off virtual event. Like I said, we've had some tremendous success with the virtual events uh, in that there's not as much prep and organization meaning we don't have to get a venue, we don't have to sell tickets, we don't have to um, get people and bodies into a room. Um, we can do these fairly easily with uh, quick mobility uh, over the virtual uh, platform. So thanks again to Allison. And again, thanks to Carrie for 
uh, really sort of quarterbacking both the, the blog content uh, for our newsletters, as well as these, um, these presentations that we might be able to utilize for MACE members. And again, as John mentioned, if you have questions at all, please, please do stop me if there's a specific question you have uh, or any point throughout the presentation. We want to make sure that you all um, are getting this content. If you have any questions at all, uh, please ask. Uh, but the last bullet that I wanted to mention is uh, something that maybe might be a surprise to John and Terry and to Carrie. Uh, we talked as a, as a staff over the last week or so, and we've decided that we're going to be able to offer a discounted chamber membership um, to all of you for being members of ACE. Uh, and we'll talk about our, our, our membership structure a little bit when Dan does his portion of the presentation. Um, but this is a really nice discount for you to be able to receive an, an even greater discount off of your chamber membership just by be, virtue of being associated with ACE. So um, that's, a, that's a really interesting offer and I wanna make sure that you are all aware and can take advantage of that. Tommy, I have a question. Sure. Um, and you, maybe you are going to talk about this a bit later. Uh, the point on facilitating a presentation at the Chamber Seminar Series, if one is interested in pursuing that, what is the specific process um, that's involved? Sure. I think Carrie's going to talk a little bit more at the end, but essentially um, that should all flow through Carrie. And then Carrie, it will be communicating with myself and, uh, and Corinne uh, and Andrea. So yes, I think Carrie's going to touch on that towards the end of the presentation. Okay. Great. And let, let me just chime in here. I'm the main contact and I can share with everybody what our editorial con um, uh, calendar looks like. Um, but I would strongly uh, encourage you to um, use the blog as a way of kind of musing about uh, what you want to talk about. And then I can share it with the chamber folks and they can work with you to tailor your presentation to their audience. Excellent. Can we go to the next slide, Andrea? So we, we took this presentation we, and we're actually um, pretty proud that we've recently uh, put together a marketing uh, and membership uh, toolkit that we can use for existing members, for member prospects, um, and everybody in between. Um, and, and the idea of it is you do the business, we'll do the work. And so you've got a staff of eight people. I think you've got five of them on the call today, along with, uh, with Allie, who's one of our volunteers. Um, but we've got a small but mighty staff of eight people uh, that serve 1,300 members in the chamber. And as you'll see as we go through this presentation, um, there's quite a lot of, of benefits and, and resources that you can utilize through the chamber um, that maybe you weren't aware of. So John went over some of the uh, introductions before and I appreciate that. Um, I just wanted to give you a snapshot of who the eight of us on staff are. As John mentioned, Quincy is our president and CEO. Um, I don't need to go through everybody here, but um, not on the call today. We've got Mladenka Stepjanovic. She is our executive assistant, as well as Gay Snook, who's our finance manager. And I think in the introductions, we might have missed Andrea Chim. Andrea is actually behind the scenes today controlling the, uh, uh, the PowerPoint so that I don't have to do that and try to talk and do two things at once. But Andrea is our communications and events coordinator. Um, and as the, these folks will all be presenting to you today, um, you'll hear a little bit more about what they do and in their roles, what, what their responsibilities are. I will say this, uh, Quincy joined the chamber about three and a half years ago. Uh, she was the first female CEO in our over 100 year history. Uh, and since she's joined the chamber, she has done uh, some amazing things that, um, that were new to the chamber. Um, I'm not saying that we're doing things necessarily differently, but we're being much more reactive and much more responsive to what the community uh, is needing. Uh, so we're still there for all of our businesses, but we're trying to develop initiatives, we're trying to develop events and programming that are really responsive and reflective to what, um, to what the community is demanding. So this next slide here, I just wanted to give everybody a little bit of an idea of the chamber structure. And I appreciate everyone telling us uh, where, they, um, you know, where they're located and how long they've been in business. The Portland Regional Chamber is a regional membership of 1,300 members. Um, within that membership, uh, there are five different community chambers as well as um, Propel, which you'll hear a little bit more about a little bit later, each of the community chambers have their own governing board. So what that means is there's a president and secretary and treasurer and about a 15 person or 20 person uh, board of directors in each of those communities. So underneath the Portland Regional Chamber of Commerce is the Portland Community Chamber of Commerce, as well as the Scarborough Community Chamber of Commerce. And these all serve up to our regional board of directors. Um, the reason this is important to understand is if you want to get active within your own communities, you have the ability to you know, work at a regional level with the Portland Regional Chamber, but also within those individual communities, um, there's a great way to get more active if you wanna do things like outreach within the community, 
uh, working with some of the students, the, um, the high school populations. There's a lot that goes on uh, to serve our next generation of leaders and talent that hopefully will be entering the workforce in years to come. Propel, for those of you that aren't too aware, Propel is our young professionals organization. Again, they operate very much like a community chamber of commerce, but it's comprised of young professionals uh, from all over the region. Uh, the, the members on that board are all employees of businesses that are also a member of the chamber. Um, and that's another one of the requisites is to be on one of the community chambers or Propel, um, your business needs to be a member of the Portland Regional Chamber. So we're gonna go through four sections today uh, and there's, there shouldn't be too many slides. Hopefully you're not gonna have a death by PowerPoint and we'll try to go as quickly as possible because I do wanna encourage any questions, but essentially the four main tenants that we're gonna be talking about today will be business building, marketing and visibility, advocacy and giving back to your community. And with that, the next slide, I believe I'm gonna turn this over to Dan. Yes, so let me introduce Daniel Santos. Dan is our membership development manager. Uh, Dan, take it away. How's it going, everyone? Uh, I'm the Membership Development Manager here at the Portland Regional Chamber of Commerce. And what that means is I'm primarily responsible for new business acquisition, making sure that your guys' organizations, if you've not been part of the chamber, understand what we do um, and how we can help your business grow. And then I get you onboarded in the chamber and make sure that while you're in the chamber, your business grows and is as successful as the reason why you joined. So um, some of the chamber benefits that you'd get if you were a chamber member are some of the main reasons why I think it's pretty important to join the chamber are its ability to grow your business. And one of the best ways we grow your business, I find, is through the connections and partnerships you can make through the programs and services that we offer here at the chamber. Um, for instance, things like our business directory. As a member of the Chamber of Commerce, you can have your individual listing on our business directory. Our business directory is actually incredibly well trafficked. It's probably one of the most trafficked sites, uh, pages on our website. And most of the time, if you Google a business in the Portland area, the, our directory page will actually rank higher than a lot of their organization's pages will. Um, so they're highly trafficked uh, places for you to spread your business and get an idea of how much traffic. I'll give you, uh, share my screen here for a second and let you see the Delphi Group's value report. Can everyone see my screen all right? Perfect. Now, as you can see here, here's a value report for the past year of the Delphi Group's uh, interactions on our business directory. So anytime the business directories, uh, the Delphi Group gets uh, seen or, or flagged on our directory, it takes note of that in our analytics and provides a beautiful report for you. Um, and you can actually adjust your short, uh, your uh, SEO keywords on our directory. You can adjust uh, things like adding our social media icons to increase or decrease these results. So it's pretty impressive what you can get for value. So it actually takes all the impressions, all the clicks, all the leads back to your website. And I believe it bases this value off 2015's uh, Google's cost per clicks. So if you wanted to get around 5,659 clicks back to your website from a different uh, organization or ad back in 2015 in order to get that much uh, visibility and just pay to advertisement, you have to pay around $6,000. Um, and that would be just to advertise globally. Well, the cool thing about the Portland Regional Chamber of Commerce is most of our members and everything that we do is right here locally. So it becomes a much more targeted opportunity. So it definitely also helps increase your uh, visibility. Um, to show some more stats, I'll try to zoom in here to make it a little bit bigger. Um, as you can see last month, so this is just one month, um, the total number of referrals to our website business directory was right around a million. Uh, so it's definitely an awesome opportunity to provide increased visibility. Um, each member on average received, you know, 637, which is not bad. It's a good opportunity to get out there and get some more visibility. Uh, let's see if I can unshare my screen now. Can I ask you a question? Hey, me. So you, uh, the Delphi Group as a business, an individual business, has been a member of the chamber for some time, and you've shared this chart relative to our business. The same information exists for ACE as an organizational chamber member. Is that true? Sure. Yeah. So, and some of the benefits that you noted before were, where there are clearly benefits, they're, they're clear benefits for an individual business membership, but can you distinguish or say a little bit more about a person who is a member of ACE 
and therefore sort of has an affiliate membership via ACE with the chamber? Uh, how do, what's the distinction of being just an affiliate member uh, through ACE versus your own business being with the chamber? That's something I think our membership's not always clear about. Yeah, so obviously in order to be a, have a directory listing on our, on our membership page, you need to be a direct member of the Chamber of Commerce and not an affiliate member of an affiliate membership organization. Um, the reason why that would be was because if our Chamber of Commerce as a membership organization uh, joined any other chamber or any other membership organization, it wouldn't just be us. It'd be 1,300 businesses, 1,300 employees, and that would multiply out way too much. My directory would become almost valueless so quickly. Uh, so to prevent that, we try to keep it so that the membership is a core value of that one. But ACE do get their own directory listing. So if ACE wanted to, every month, they can alter that directory listing to highlight a local ACE member. You guys can change them to change the social media icons to highlight a local ACE, uh, ACE's business. So you guys can cultivate your individual listing to highlight a member and give them uh, increased visibility and benefits through that method, if you'd like. Right, and then the, the Portland Chamber uh, site would just be one additional way for people to find that. So we, we have our own website, so people can find it through our referral system as well. So, so yeah, it'd be a, a, a multiplier, right? So that'd be great. Right. And then also uh, another great opportunity is obviously we, we have the ACES directory listing. So as long as you guys have a clear um, message about what you guys do, a lot of consulting executives are part of the Chamber of Commerce, and it's a great opportunity for you guys to get visibility and drive membership for your organization. I have a quick question, Dan. At one point, um, you were exploring the idea of having um, a video link on these membership pages. Yes. Um, and have you, have you gotten that loaded yet or has it fallen by the wayside with everything Corona? Uh, it's not fallen by the wayside. We, in it, we do have the capabilities right now. It's just more or less uh, the, the, the increased backend that we would need is a little bit complicated right now. So we're gonna have to get a little bit more support in order to make sure that we can support that process. So for now it's on hold. Okay, well stay tuned. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, let me see if I can stop sharing my, is my screen stop sharing yet? I need to see that PowerPoint again. All right, Andrea, can you throw up those slides again? Boom. Awesome. So another great thing, I'll go back to slides. Sorry. Great. So as an ACE member, as Tommy was saying, you guys get to come to our events um, as an ACE chamber executive um, for free or discounted. That's another great opportunity for you guys to spread the value of your business. Our networking events, we do right around 120 a year. Um, I think last year we had right around 70,000 attendees at these events. So that's 70,000 opportunities for you to connect, make partnerships, find businesses, um, and find purchasers, all the things that you guys need to make sure that you guys uh, can spread the good gospel of what you do. Uh, another great opportunity through our membership is employee recruitment. So if you guys are looking for employees, things like that, there's a ton of job seekers that come to these events. Um, so if you're looking to grow your organization uh, and find really quality staff, you'll find a lot of uh, really qualified job seekers at a lot of the Chamber's events, which I find to be an incredible value for a lot of our members. And then I think that was mostly it for me. I think Joe's up to talk about how we advocate we, for you guys. We have a question from Arthur. Uh, Arthur, would you like to, to uh, mention your question? I basically was asking what the chamber does to nurture the, uh, the ethical and responsible behavior of its members, uh, both in setting goals. I know that, that ACE has a, has a code of ethics for consultants, but it, 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 it's more than just... Uh, just a, a legalistic requirement, it creates a conversation on what it means to be sustainable and responsible. And by the way, I'm going to have to leave this meeting early, but we'll listen to the, the replay because I have another meeting to run at 10 o'clock. I apologize. 
Yeah, Arthur, I, this is Tommy again. I could probably answer that, you know, in, in doing a little bit of research about ACE and knowing what we have at the chamber. Um, you know, your mission statement and the chamber's mission statement line up very, very similarly um, in terms of et integrity and ethics. Um, you know, we allow anybody to be a chamber member, um, but there is a vetting process and you'll see that, um, you know, when Dan does his initial interviews, when people reach out to him or we reach out to them, um, there is a vetting process. We'd like to get a better, better understanding as to what, um, you know, what the business does and what they, what they, you know, what, what they do. Um, you know, we don't turn people away. We've never had an issue uh, with that. Um, but it's not something that's, um, I would say, strictly enforced in terms of uh, a code of conduct. Hopefully that helps, that answers your question. Thanks, Tommy. I, I just want to check in on, on uh, and maybe clarify something that I think sometimes is not always understood by our, our members. Um, if, and it has to do with attending chamber events and networking and so forth. Sure. If, I, if I am an ACE member, but my business is not also a chamber member, um, because ACE is a chamber member, I can attend any event and under the auspices of ACE, if I can put it that way. However, when I'm at that event in terms of networking and so forth, while I may represent ACE in, in some manner, I'm certainly free to represent my business and to network my business and hand out my business cards, and et cetera, at, in, in the normal way. That's true, right? Yeah, the only difference between you and any of our other members is your name tag won't have your business's name. It'll say ACE member or ACE consulting member or something along those lines. So you're, you just won't have anything on your name tag and any of your specific uh, membership stuff will say that you're an ACE membership member. Could I also bring, my, bring another name tag with my business on it that I also put on my lapel or something? I don't see a problem with that. I don't, I don't know. Not I don't know. I have an issue. I don't... Not, I mean, you can come and wear full-blown regalia if you want. Dress up. Or my hat might say the Delphi group, but my badge says ace. <laughs> Some people frown upon wearing hats inside, John, but if you want to wear a hat with your Delphi group, feel yeah. free. I, I actually take um, benefit of the free Sharpies that they have on the table to add my business name. So, um, I, I don't know if you intended this or not, but when you uh, – my experience is when I sign up for a chamber event as ACE, I put in ACE as the register, and then you ask again after that what uh, to put on the name tag. And I always put ACE slash practical decisions, and you accept that, and it shows up on a name tag printed and everything. It's great. Okay, thank you. I think I'm going to take up the presentation now. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Dan. Um, this is Joe Morrow, and I'm the Director of Advocacy at the Chamber. Um, thanks so much for having me here this morning. I hope, you know, this is a breakfast meeting, so I hope at least somebody has some breakfast with them or at least some coffee. Uh, makes these morning meetings a little better. Um, so Tommy and Dan uh, went over some, some of our uh, benefits from the Chamber, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, my role, and that's um, being an advocate for our members. Um, when it comes to policy, legislation, um, distributing resources and tools, um, it really sort of runs the gamut as far as communicating with members on, on the latest uh, developments um, throughout the last um, you know, six to seven months or so, um, as well as um, keeping an eye on uh, local, uh, regional and, and state um, policymakers. Um, I've been at the chamber for about a year now, which is probably crazy to the staff that's on this call, but um, I started in November of last year. Um, so I'm going to run through some of the, the initiatives and the efforts that I've um, been a part of for the last uh, year or so, 11 months, I guess. So next slide. Um, so the the pandemic has um, has kind of flipped my role on its head, and and um, I've been dedicated, uh, especially from about mid March through now, um, on COVID nineteen response, um, and that's included a whole host of different um, aspects. Um, I would say the chief in that would be disseminating as much communication as we can. Um, to our membership and to the community, 
Um, for the first couple months there, it was fast and furious, as you all might remember. And there was so many changes being announced um, at the city level, at the state level, from Congress. Um, and so uh, I, it was my role to make sure that all of that information was, was um, getting out to members and to the wider community. Um, and that, that ranged from information on how to access financial assistance to um, what the latest unemployment regulations were and how they were changing, um, to then some of the reopening guidance. Um, we, we advocated with, uh, at the city level for some of the, the changes that many of you, I'm sure, have noticed in Portland and in other surrounding uh, municipalities around um, ensuring that small businesses have a little bit of flexibility in order to, to, to remain um, open um, and do things a little bit differently, um, but, but keep, keep things going, keep their doors open, keep their staff on. Um, and, and so that was, that was the lion's share of my duties for much of the summer. Um, for, for this group, I would just mention, I, I work specifically with a handful of sole proprietors um, towards the beginning of the pandemic um, when they were, there was a lot of confusion around what are sole proprietors eligible for uh, in terms of financial assistance? Uh, what do the employment rule, unemployment rules mean for them? Um, and, and where can they go to look for resources that are specific to them? Um, that includes LLCs and others. And um, so I, I was on the phone, you know, personally with several of those folks trying to, to talk through um, where to go, where the resources could be found, who to get in touch with, or I was reaching out as an intermediary on those issues. So um, that, that was a, a huge part of my duties for much of the beginning part of the pandemic um, and, and something that I offer as in my role uh, with the chamber. Uh, the only other thing I would mention on that slide, sorry, Andrew, you beat me, but um, <clears throat> we did host several events towards the beginning of the pandemic, including events with um, the CDC director, Dr. Shaw, with Congresswoman Pingree, with Commissioner Johnson from the De Department of Economic and Community Development um, to get the word out on the latest um, and, and how it would affect businesses, how it affects employers, um, and how it would affect uh, many of you, I would imagine. Um, and so I would just mention those, those events as part of, uh, of our COVID response efforts. We can go to the next slide now. Great. Um, so our, another initiative that we've taken up over the last several months is called Standing in Solidarity. Um, and that is now a group of over 400 employers who have signed on to a commitment um, to work against racial and social injustice in our communities. Um, I'll say the, the events of this summer um, and some of the um, some of the efforts going all, all around the country. The chamber felt like we could be a convener for these for these issues um, and sort of bring folks together and say, uh, you know, let's let's not just put out a statement. Let's actually look at some actions that we can take um, going forward uh, on these issues to address these issues, even in a state like Maine. Um, especially in a state like Maine. So, um, you know, we had an initial group of signers that included L.L. Bean and Wex and IDEX and Unum and some of the largest employers in our region. Um, and now we have a list of over 400, which include, you know, sole proprietor, one, one person shops, all the way up through some of those really large employers that I mentioned. Um, and as part of the initiative, we've, we've been offering multiple trainings, panel discussions, um, we did a 21 day challenge where we sent out a piece of content every morning um, for folks to learn a little bit more about, uh, about racial injustice in our country um, and a little bit about the history around it and also about how folks could take action within their own organization. Um, part of the reason for this initiative was we heard from small businesses, small organizations who just didn't have the diversity and inclusion teams or staff um, like some of those larger employers, but they too wanted to, to take action on some of these issues and to improve some of their um, practices. Um, and so that was a, a motivating factor for us to, to, to start this and to, to um, offer these resources. So I know I think there's at least a couple of people on this call who, who are, um, have signed up for the initiative or 
have participated in at least one of the resources that we've offered. So thanks to, to those of you who have. Next slide. Um, so of course, I'm sure you've all heard about this election coming up. Um, and the Portland Chamber has been involved in, uh, at the local level, um, there's, um, there's several referendums who are, that are on the ballot um, in Portland specifically. And so as part of the Chamber's advocacy efforts, just as an example for you to see sort of some of the things that we do on, um, to advocate on behalf of businesses, um, we've been working um, to oppose a few of those referendums. Um, one is um, would institute a, a disaster wage um, during declared states of emergency like the pandemic. Um, and several small businesses that we've heard from um, would find it very hard to pay that increased wage during a disaster um, when there's a lot of these businesses are struggling already. Um, another is on rent control and another is on a, um, a so-called Green New Deal uh, around um, environmental, environmental regulations for buildings. Um, and so we've partnered with some other groups in the community. Go to the next slide, Andrea. Um, to form a couple of um, campaigns around these referenda. Um, and just a little bit about the process. Um, we did survey our membership um, prior to taking any sort of stance, um, put it out Portland wide um, for, for any chamber members who are in Portland to, to weigh in and to give us their take on these. Um, and then we have a board process. As Tommy mentioned, there's multiple community chamber boards including the Portland Community Chamber Board and then the Portland Regional Chamber Board. Um, and so there was a, a long board process as well um, before any, taking any sort of um, stance on these. So um, just another example of some of the type of advocacy we do um, on behalf of the business community. I know the business community is not one size fits all, that's for sure. Um, but like I said, what I try to do is, is, is communicate and do as much outreach as I can to, to our members um, to see where they are on the issues and how it would affect them um, and how sort of, um, I guess, severely it would impact them. Um, and then take that into account as we look at our, our advocacy efforts, either with the, with the city council or the state legislature, or in this case, on a ballot referendum. Next slide. And then just some additional advocacy efforts I would mention that um, have nothing to do really with this election um, that were still ongoing even, even during this time. Um, and that's on the state of Maine's new paid leave law, which goes into effect on January of uh, 2021. We had the Justice Week held a, um, a webinar on, on the state's new paid leave law, what it means for employers. Um, so we, pro we tried our best to provide um, information, resources, webinars um, to our members um, so that if they are dealing with uh, what does this paid leave law mean for me and how does it affect my employees and how do I make sure I'm compliant with it, um, we hold events like this to, to have folks explain it who are experts. We also work on the, um, the recode effort in Portland, which is a rewrite of the city's land use code, um, which is very relevant for many of our members and will um, have um, several changes to the city of Portland once it is um, finished. Um, and there was also a moratorium in South Portland that we worked on, um, worked closely with the city council, which were, and they were all great in um, taking the chamber's uh, message into account um, and our thoughts into account on, um, as they considered that moratorium that was in um, early September. I think that's, it for me, um, is there any questions before I kind of uh, transition to the next section of the presentation? Great, if not, um, and thank you, Megan. I saw Megan popped into the chat there, uh, mentioned the challenge and the trainings. Um, I really, really appreciate that. Um, happy to get that information to anyone who is interested. Um, for the next um, section of the presentation, um, we're going to uh, Corinne Mokler, our marketing manager, is going to talk a little bit about um, 
some of the community initiatives that um, the chamber has been involved with, um, including um, some that I talked about, the coronavirus resources and standing solidarity, but also a couple of other initiatives as well. So Corinne, take it away. Hi everyone, I'm Corinne Mokler. I'm the marketing manager here at the chamber and have been here while well, I was, my year anniversary was August. Um, so a little over a year. And I come from a, a marketing background, specifically in graphic design and copywriting and advertising. So that's why things look so purdy on the, with our graphics and such. Um, that's kind of an extra boost besides the, um, the usual marketing and newsletters and social that we do. Um, as Joe mentioned, we are very active in the community with various initiatives. And he already touched upon our coronavirus resources and our Standing in Solidarity initiative. Um, a couple others that we launched and since COVID took over uh, was Pay It Forward Maine. Um, was, I think we launched that like in March, like soon after all, everything happened here in Maine. And essentially Pay It Forward Maine was about uh, coming together as a state uh, with uh, a library, if you want to call it that. Uh, it's a website that we run and it's essentially a library of tools and resources and ideas for how to support um, your fellow businesses, especially small local businesses during this time, as well as each other as individuals and how to support yourself. And um, it's, it was a lot of, um, it was really interesting to get the input from other businesses and individuals on what to add to that page. It's really grown. There's a lot of ideas on that page and um, it still gets a lot of hits on the website, even though it's now been up since March. And then the Let's Be Kind initiative, I can't quite remember when that came out. Um, maybe in the last couple of months, it was a partnership with the Retail Association of Maine and the Maine Grocers Association. I think I'm saying that wrong, but it was essentially in response to um, getting back to business when the governor started releasing you know, guidelines and different businesses were allowed to open. And unfortunately, you know, everyone just dealing with the pandemic, there was some rudeness toward um, businesses, employees, you know, especially in like the retail and grocery environment. And so it was kind of a, you know, nice reminder to be kind and, you know, just reminding people of basic things like, you know, wear your mask, give yourself extra time, have patience. So that was more of a, um, you know, let's, let's be human initiative. Um, okay, I think we can go to the next slide, Andrea. Um, okay, Pay It Forward Maine. Uh, this is just to show you a little more. Um, when you go to the website, you'll see different areas um, that you can click on, um, including the toolkit, which allows you to spread the word on your own social media. Um, <laughs> thank you, the circling. And uh, it's just, it's a great, it's a great resource um, for people to check out. So you can skip to the next one. Oh, here's a video on Let's Be Kind, so we can take a break to watch that. For all of us. We would not be here without our customers. We want to make sure that they feel safe coming in. Wearing a mask is uncomfortable, but it's important, and it's basically about taking care of the people around you. If we all wear masks, we're all going to stay healthy. How are you doing today? Please don't get, don't get upset with our people. They're just doing their job, and they're trying to make it safe for you. If we can all just do these very simple things to help each other, we will get through this together. So that was essentially the gist of um, Let's Be Kind. And you can find, um, you can easily access any of our initiatives from the homepage of the uh, re uh, Chamber's website, portlandregion.com. Um, we have the graphics on the homepage, so you can easily click through to anything um, to learn more. So going back to Chamber benefits and specifically how the Chamber can increase your visibility, um, Dan and Tommy have touched upon a few of those things already, uh, like the directory listing um, and the website, but other ways that you can get involved. Um, when it comes to events, we have um, sponsorship options, which essentially mean that you sponsor one of our events at um, 
a level that works for your business. We really, we really have a variety of levels so that, you know, the, the big dog, so to speak, and the one person shops can um, be involved and uh, get their name out there in uh, partnership or in support of our events. So that's always something that um, you'd be working that out specifically with Tommy. So that's, that's always an option. And we've, we've come up with some really unique packages for um, member businesses in that way. Uh, Dan already talked about the directory listing. Um, it is one of the top five, usually in the top three actually, of our website pages. Um, it, and it's just, um, it's a great resource um, alone, like just on its own. Uh, ribbon cutting and special events and promotion of those, we offer in-person support, obviously socially distanced nowadays. Um, if you have a grand opening or, you know, like an anniversary to celebrate, the chamber will come by with our props and, and then we share it on all of our social media channels. And it's Thank really you. the the audience that we provide, um, the reach that we provide, that is our marketing, the backbone of our marketing. And I think Tommy already mentioned, we have, you know, a little over 10,000 for our newsletter subscribers, um, very engaged subscribers. I would say that is gold in terms of promoting events or initiatives. We get a lot of, a lot of click through and open rate. Uh, the open rate is very high. And so is the click through rate. And then for social media, we have um, close to, we're almost at 20,000 through all of our various channels. And again, just very loyal followers. And another uh, way that we help get the word out for our member businesses, um, and it can be something small like a bakery that is offering something new or a job posting. I mean, it's really anything that we are alerted to, whether through being tagged or having it sent to our attention. Um, we're more than happy to help our members uh, share their news with our followers. Hey, Corinne, can I also talk about the ribbon cutting thing? Um, yeah, go ahead. Up, we run all of our ribbon cuttings like, like events. So you guys as ACE members could all join our ribbon cuttings. And it's a great opportunity to show that you support a local organization and to get great partnerships with a new business that's opening up. So that is an awesome uh, opportunity for ACE members to be able to join all these ribbon cuttings that we are hosting, uh, provide support, and also potentially get some leads and opportunities, so. Yes, definitely. Uh, I, I have a quick question about the sponsorships. Um, sure. If ACE did a one-off program um, with the chamber, could our individual members have sponsorships of that program as their own business? Um, I'll answer that one. For yeah, you. I was Tommy might be better for that. Yeah, the, the, the sponsorships are, are, are really a member benefit. And so that's one that I'd have to have a side conversation. You know, typically we, we have 1300 members. And as Corinne mentioned, we've got members uh, sponsorships ranging in size from 25,000 down to $250, and even smaller than that for uh, the ability to bring in goods and services um, as, as items for, for giveaways or raffles throughout the year. And so that's one of those ones, Carrie, that, that is really a member specific benefit. Um, you know, sponsorship is, is, is reserved for those um, businesses and organizations that are active members of the chamber. But, uh, yeah. Corinne, with, with, with your obvious skill and talent in uh, uh, graphic art and, uh, and marketing, if ACE mm -hmm. as an organization wanted some, your perspective on something that we might be doing that involves um, graphic artistry are could we counsel with you um yes to a, i mean to an extent i mean i don't i don't know if i have enough hours in the day to be you know designing things so to speak for individual members however for example um the growth basics uh webinar that we're hosting next tuesday with allison obviously that being a partnership event i created the graphics for that and and promoting that, but I'm also more than happy to, you know, take, have a set of eyes on something and to give you, you know, feedback. If that's, if that's what you're specifically talking about, then yes, yeah. I, I'm available for that. Yeah. Right. Great. Thank you. Okay. Feel free to just stop. And, and if there's something that, that you, know, you have a question about, feel free to jump in. Uh, the last of the chamber benefits, I want to talk about how the chamber can help you as an organization or you personally, or your employees 
uh, to be able to give back to the community. And earlier I spoke about the regional chamber structure within this community chamber structure, uh, including Propel. Um, you know, the idea that you as a chamber member can serve on one of our boards or planning committees, you know, we have those six, uh, five community chambers as well as the Propel board, which is the sixth board. We have our regional board. We have various committees for our eggs and issues, kegs and issues, women of the chamber, um, various ad hoc planning committees. Uh, we're always looking for willing and engaged volunteers. And I, and I did take note of everybody who spoke when, during the introductions. A lot of you folks are retired from uh, your, your previous career and now you're starting out uh, in your own entrepreneurship. Um, the level of expertise and, and acumen that you have uh, would be more than beneficial to serve on one of our committees. So if that's something you're looking to do to be able to give back, um, we would welcome uh, your, your, your volunteerism. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out too is we have within our 1300 members of the chamber, 200 of those members are nonprofit organizations. And again, just like the, the, the businesses in our uh, membership, they range in size from one person organizations all the way up to those that are in the hundreds of employees, like a United Way or the Big Brothers Big Sisters. Um, again, there's, there's the diversity of members within the organization, within the chamber um, is vast and that includes nonprofits. Um, the last thing I want to mention here on this slide, member to member opportunities. Um, you know, we, we're going to talk a little bit more in the last slide about the, the member to member discount that we're able to offer to ACE members, which again, this is a fairly unique offering. Um, but on our website, you'll find member to member deals uh, from anything from uh, insurance, uh, you know, for your health insurance to, um, you know, goods and services that you might uh, typically need or want or utilize throughout the year that as a member of the chamber, you can get at a discounted rate. Uh, secondary to that is the ability to share valuable content with our membership. I definitely um, want people to understand that that relationship with ACE, again, unique, but also very valuable. That's that content sharing, whether in the terms of blog content or uh, in, in uh, presentation or content facilitation. Um, you know, I, I, again, this is something that we benefit from by being able to have in, enhanced content you are able to benefit from because you're getting your message out there and our members are able to benefit from because they're able to see um, this valuable content that's, that's put out on our platforms. Um, so that's, that's really all I wanted to say about giving back to the community. One of those uh, organizations that, um, that you can serve on to help uh, to work with is Propel. And if we could go to the next slide, I wanted to introduce um, our volunteer uh, who's on this call today. She's been patiently waiting. It's Allie Floyd. Uh, Allie is uh, the vice president of Propel. Uh, she actually works in her real job as a marketing coordinator at Evergreen Credit Union. And uh, she serves on the Propel board. And she's gonna tell you a little bit about uh, Propel and, and ways that you can get involved um, with that organization. Thanks, Allie. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me here tonight, guys. I'm going to let you know a little bit more about what we do at Propel. So we are that sixth chamber board. Um, our board members are all members of the chamber, and they range from people that work in law, that financial services like I do, or people that own their own business. And they're all young professionals. So what we do is we, we have networking events that we put on to help build young professionals networks within Maine to give them those local roots to keep our young professionals in Maine. That's one of the big initiatives that we are working on is building business connections for young professionals like yourselves that enable them to grow and have a great career in Maine. So we do that through a different event series. We have our Pro U series that partners with local universities like UMaine and UNE to build alumni networks and get them closer into the community so we keep them in Maine and just establishing networks for our young professionals. And then we also have our In Focus series where we work with different nonprofits to let young professionals know what they do, how they can get involved with their local communities, as well as raising awareness for these organizations. And that just helps develop their skill sets, get them involved, volunteer opportunities, different vo boards that they can serve on. We also have our main ambassador program, which is fairly still new, but it allows people that are looking to come to Maine to connect with a young professional or anyone really in Maine to let them know what's going on, how they can find jobs, what are the good places to eat, what's a good thing to do, let them know about the Portland Chamber and all the benefits that they have of part, being part of Propel. And then our big award ceremony that um, we have at the end of the year is Ignition Awards. And Ignition is really great where we get to honor all of young professionals in Maine, businesses that are doing amazing things within the Portland area, 
and it's usually a very large in-person event. This year it'll be virtual, uh, so stay tuned to how that's going to be. <laughs> Uh, we are going to be expanding our awards for ignition this year to highlight more young professionals and entrepreneurs within the greater Portland area. Uh, so if you guys would like to connect further, um, I do have our email right there, propelportland at gmail.com, or if anybody has any questions generally about what Propel does and kind of what we can offer, I can answer those now as well. Well, a uh, number of us might not meet the age criteria for being a Propel member. Um, I don't know what that, what that is, but, but I'm, I'm imagining that um, Propel, members of Propel are, uh, many of them are service providers or maybe some are, are, are even uh, doing consulting work like some of us are, but are in businesses that may be able to, it may be beneficial for people in Propel to, to know some of us. We might be helpful in a variety of ways. Um, so what's the best way for ACE to get engaged with Propel? Uh, definitely follow us on social media. You can reach out to propelportland at gmail.com with questions. Um, attend a Propel event. We do have one coming up in November. Um, date to be determined, and then our Ignition Awards will be in December, uh, date to be determined still. But if you also wanted to attend one of our board meetings, our next one is in November, we always welcome guests um, to audit, to engage with us, give us ideas. Um, you guys also have a lot more experience in areas of events and promoting that we might not have. Um, so we do relish that mentorship opportunity. Uh, Allie, uh, Ms. Terry, um, I had spoken with Jillian last winter before COVID hit. In fact, I think that might have been one of my last meetings before COVID hit. Anyway, um, and one of the things that she had talked about was uh, skill development for Propel members. And we offer, in our monthly programs, we offer a lot of skill development programs. Uh, is there an a easy way for us to promote our programs through your mailing list, for example? Absolutely. We're always looking for content for our email newsletters, for social media. Um, so if you guys have any events or things you would like to promote, uh, you can just send them over to us and we will post it out to our followers. And I do know that sometimes every once in a while there's opportunities in Propel for businesses that aren't chamber members to sponsor events and things like that. So that might be another opportunity uh, as ACE members you could take advantage of for Propel. Well, Absolutely. That, that's great. And, and maybe, you know, we have a newsletter that Peggy does a great job with, and maybe we should include information on Propel and Propel events in our own newsletter. We would love that. And again, if you guys have anything that you would want to us to send out to our constituency, we would do that as well. Allie, this is uh, Doug Packard. I uh, just wanted to offer my any assistance or input. I've been involved with Propel in the chamber for 19 years now. Uh, one of my clients won the first Entreverge Award of a pink guitar back in the day. And um, I've been to many uh, Propel events. And uh, I would be interested in helping uh, bridge the gap between, you know, these separate items, <laughs> if you will, and uh, all the different assumptions and uh, biases we all have if you hear me. So I've been to some events that were fantastic and then other ones that uh, I was quickly made to feel like a, uh, you know, <laughs> you know what? So, um, and I'm very conscious of it. And like I say, I've got a lot of young clients and I've been involved for years and love having the separate pieces, but also, and I also have three uh, sons, adult sons that are all back here in the Portland area who I've encouraged over the years to be involved, et cetera, with Propel. So. Anyway, just glad to be a part of the advancing that piece, but also the this piece too. So, great, great, great. Thanks, Doug. Some years ago, uh, Ace had a arrangement with the Papel uh, group to do pro bono assistance work uh, in varying ways, and I don't know if it's worth. Um, revisiting that um, as, a, as a service to the Propel group we might offer. 
I think it'd definitely be something we'd be interested in, um, especially if we've done it in the past. We're always looking for new ideas and new initiatives um, and ways that we can connect further with the community and chamber members. Let me just say that that would be a perfect um, agenda item for the outreach committee um, to, to do that liaison. So maybe we should connect, Alec. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can send me an email. Um, we definitely can start connecting on that. Okay. I also think we should hold an event on Sam's boat. But anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. Uh, Carrie, I was going to say your list is growing as a result of this conversation. That's okay. I like to be busy. <laughs> Always looking for a new Zoom opportunity these days. Yeah, yeah. Don't have enough of those. No, no, no. Nope, nope, nope. I'm not blind yet. Allie, thank you for, uh, for giving that uh, uh, overview of Propel. And again, if there are any questions, um, we're going to send out this entire presentation to, uh, to Carrie and to Terry to get to you folks. Um, so anything that we covered in this, and if you need to reach out to anybody via the, um, uh, the emails that we provided, uh, you'll have all of this in the deck that we'll send out uh, after today's call. But again, just wanted to go over sort of and reiterate, um, if you have questions regarding specific um, aspects of the chamber, um, again, this will just kind of break it down for you. Anything general, uh, that can go to our chamber at inbox. But then if it's uh, regarding any potential membership, which I don't want to forget to mention, Dan's going to cover that in the next slide. Um, but benefits and renewal or advocacy or our marketing that you heard about or any of our events and communications, you've got the, um, the staff contacts right here for you to reach out to. And then I, with, oh, sorry, John. No, go ahead, finish. Uh, yeah, just the next slide is uh, the one I think we've all been waiting for that Dan's going to cover, but uh, we have a great offer for, for, for ACE members. I, John, I do have a practical question, <laughs> but everybody's looking at this slide right now, probably. Um, uh, the chamber uh, office has rooms that sometimes can be used for meetings. And I know uh, Dana and I have uh, frequently taken advantage of using a chamber office for, for meeting space, if, if available. And the chamber has been all, always been very good about providing that. Is that a benefit for ACE and or ACE members? John, great question. Yeah, I know you and I have talked about this in the past. Yeah, a couple things with regards to that. The, the As you can probably see, Dan and, and Corinne and, and Joe and Myself, we're all working from our homes. The chamber offices are, are still currently closed because of the pandemic. So we've been working sure. remotely, um, you know, since March 17th. Um, but typically when we are in the office, we do have two uh, great conference rooms and third office, uh, which is fully set up with Wi-Fi, a phone, um, and, a, and a desk, and, and, and actually its own printer. Um, and again, that's a member benefit. So anybody who's a member of the chambers, whether if it's an ACE, um, event, well, certainly those, that boardroom, which holds 28 people, or the smaller boardroom, which holds a dozen, or the, um, the office could be used by ACE as a, as, as a member of, let me say this correctly, it could be used for ACE. Um, for any individual ACE members who are not a member of the chamber, um, that, would, that would probably need to be a, me a member benefit that we would exclude specifically for ACE. Yeah. Um, so again, if you guys are having a, a, a meeting in person like we have today with the 20 odd people, uh, we could fit you all in the conference room uh, under normal circumstances um, to have this uh, this weekly meeting or monthly meeting. Um, or if the, the ACE program committee, as an example, is looking for a place to meet and discuss programming, um, that might be an option. Absolutely. Or even if, like, let's say ACE wants to hold, like, an educational seminar in the boardroom, you can do that right. as well. Yeah. Right. Great. Thank you. So, Dan, I'll let you take this away. This is something that we're, we've been very excited to um, – to be able to roll out to you all today. Um, Dan, take it away. Yeah, so as you heard with most of the talk today, there's a kind of like a split benefit between being a member of a member organization of a member organization and being a chamber member. Um, but to get things like the awesome directory listing, uh, the ability to have like your own name tag stuff, the opportunity to um, get more in depth with the partnerships and our help, um, you can actually join the chamber, and because you're a member of ACE, we're offering you 20% off the base rate of your membership. Um, and the base rate of the membership is $325. Uh, so you guys will actually have a membership cheaper than the, pretty much any other organization that we have in our entire membership base. Um, and what this will enable you guys to do is 
have your own directory listing, which you guys can see get trafficked a ton, be able to register for events, um, any of our uh, special member only benefits you'd be able to take advantage of. And Dan, I, I, I appreciate you pointing out that our base rate membership is $325. That includes two employees, which I was again, taking some notes when you were all doing your introductions. It sounds like the majority of the, the folks on the call today have either one or two employees within their organization. I know the ACE membership rates are 150 for one employee, 300 for two. Um, again, this 20% off would be off for 325. And then we do charge $11 per employee um, after, the, uh, after the two free individuals are covered. Uh, but again, I think for most of you that are on the call today, uh, your, your two people are smaller uh, sized organizations. So that 20% off would come off of the 325 and put you like, as Dan said, at yeah, a much Yeah, the base lower membership rate. ends up being uh, 250 as opposed to 325. That's great. Thank you, it's a nice offer. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, as you can see from the Delphi group, at 350 just for the advertising costs on our directory alone might be a worthwhile investment for your future. So if anybody has any in, uh, interest in, in finding out more about joining the chamber, um, there's, there is a special um, address that Dan's got there. Again, we'll, we'll include this slide when we send out the, the, uh, the packet to everybody. Um, but you can certainly go to the, the chamber website and you can click on the membership tab, learn a little bit more. There's a join today button. Um, if you click that, just make sure you click bill me later because Dan and I will sort out the, uh, the financial aspect of it. Actually use this link specifically because this is actually ACE's own form. So as when you join this organization, it gets tagged um, with our discounts and everything. And uh, so if you use this one, you'll get signed up with its own ACE specific form. I have a question for Joe Morrow, if I may. Joe Morrow. Yeah. Um, what, is, what do you see as the hottest or most difficult or pressing political issues that will be coming before the chamber and its membership to think about what positions to take on them and how to address them? What's Good luck, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think I would point to it. It's hard to, to necessarily have a crystal ball, but I would point to the ones that we're um, handling right now for this current election. And, um, I would say that they probably um, could have some impacts going forward, whether they pass or fail. Um, <clears throat> so looking at um, as the pandemic persists, how can we ensure that both businesses themselves, employers and employees are um, sort of, I guess, having the most um, resources that available and being taken care of in a, in a, uh, in, in, the, in the best way possible. Um, I think the pandemic is shining a light on some of these issues that um, folks maybe knew were, were a problem before, but, but you know, never necessarily was in front of their face. Um, the other one that we've been working on before the pandemic, during this time, and will continue to work on is um, how can we, whether through legislation or, or uh, policy making um, or just through the current system, how do we add to um, and support our workforce in Maine? Um, it's going to continue to be a, an issue. It's part of the, the state's 10 year plan looking forward. Um, how do we add? We need more workers, even with the pandemic and folks um, coming off payrolls temporarily. It's going, it's probably that's going to persist. We need to find ways to add to our workforce. And in a lot of ways, we have folks here who can, who can be part of the workforce um, and maybe are currently not in the workforce or are underemployed. Um, and so that's something we're trying to, to work through and figure out. The other one I would say is, um, is public transportation in the Portland area. Um, I expect that to be a hot topic for the next several years um, as more folks do move to Maine and we are able to attract folks to Maine and to this area, which is great when we need it. Um, but we don't have the public transportation infrastructure. We don't have even the highway and bridge infrastructure to handle that. Um, and so I think that will continue to be um, a very hot topic um, for the next few years. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Yeah. Very interesting. I know we're getting for, for time at this point. Um, <clears throat> before uh, uh, letting Carrie go over a brief slide that I know she has, I just want to, on um, behalf of ACE and the program, our program committee, thank all of you from the chamber for a very informative uh, program. And thanks to Quincy for helping to organize this. 
So we know you all have uh, a number of things uh, on your daily agendas and uh, to have all of you present uh, for this amount of time this morning is very, very much appreciated. So thank you all. And uh, Carrie? I, I agree with John that we are, that the chamber benefits are absolutely the most underutilized benefits for ACE members. Um, and I want to highlight um, the upcoming Allison Bishop hat trick. She has a wonderful blog posted on managing your finances when you are an entrepreneur. Um, she will have a post in Main Biz that links back to her blog. Um, it, it's in our Ask Ace articles. And on top of that, through the magic of Corinne, uh, she's going to get a plug um, on that blog post in their Onward newsletter. And um, she is going to be speaking next week on the same topic. So that's a lot of bang for one blog post. Um, although, Allison, I know you have to work on the presentation a little bit more. <laughs> As to the editorial calendar, right now we are um, in a phase where we're talking, the overall theme through the end of November is going to be the gig economy. And then we pick up with a theme uh, of leadership for at least the next two months. Um, and I've already got some, some ideas there. So please get in touch with me. This is the email uh, that you should use. Write it down, take up your pencils, um, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Carrie. So any other questions or comments before we leave today? Just a big thank you to the, to the chamber. It's yeah. very informative. Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, have a great rest of your day and weekend.